by the grace of God. Honest Shonekon. He has left this world of thriving wickedness. He has left the church militant with all his difficulties and problems and is now at rest in the church triumphant. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. People of God, praise ye the Lord. And so, my dear people of God, here gathered, Auntie, it's Shunekum. Children of the Shunekum, people of God, do not grieve endlessly and hopelessly like those who are hopeless, like those who have no Christ. You have Christ, therefore you have hope. You rejoice instead and give thanks to God for this man lying here. It's at the bosom of Abraham because of the life that he lived, because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God as we are here today celebrating him. Look all around you. Did anybody wish for anything better? So rejoice and give thanks to God. Well, I know that at this point, it would be appropriate to say a word or two about his life and times in this country. What I know about him. I know him to be a man of prayer. To be a man of great faith in God. Wherever he was in the world, the first thing he wants to do is to find out where the church was. He must go and worship God. He will never miss his early morning communion. That's him. A man utterly committed to everything that has to do with God. Ever humble. Totally unassuming. His love for God was easily visible in how he deal with other people. And I'm aware that to his wife and to his children, he was the best husband and father anyone could ever wish to have. In church of God, he was a great pillar and shining example of authentic Christianity. In spite of his environmental position in life, in society, you know something? He was a member of Guild of Stewards, serving the people. That's how humble this man was. His virtuous footprints, his contributions are discernible anywhere in this country. In Lagos, in Belkota, in Abuja, in Ekoma, everywhere. His footprints are still discernible. And regardless of whatever was going on around him, he remained steadfast. And in so far as we know, he didn't compromise his faith. Unlike many of us, when you find ourselves in danger, and we have to make a hard choice, we say, well, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to Lansi, I'm not going to Roger. Not him. Not him. He stood firm for the Lord. In his world of business, a noted captain of industry and guru of the boardroom as the head of the largest business conglomerate in Nigeria. He was not only very resourceful and successful, he was well established and contented. Contented. He was not known to me to be a politician. However, as he journeyed on in his life pilgrimage, at a point, without his thinking about it, without his planning for it, without his asking for it, he found himself in the ever dark, dreary, and murky waters of Nigerian politics. Following the infamous annulment of the 1993 presidential elections, the aftermath of which threw Nigeria into chaos, he was invited and persuaded to head the interim national government. Those were not the best of times for Nigeria. 
certainly not the best of times for any leader. But what I know is this. At that point in our life, in this country, Bangida and his government had done what they did. People were demanding that he should leave office. He, for reasons best known to him, didn't want to go. But when it became clear that the political imbroglio, if not quickly resolved, could lead to violent agitations and massive bloodshed, the Maradona of Nigerian politics quickly created the Tosia government. Looking for someone to bring about the change. He had annulled the election, yes. He had given the decree to back it up, yes. What's going to happen to Nigeria? He now looked for someone. Who could that be? A fellow soldier? No. A politician? No. He wanted a neutral person to head the ING. So, it fell on this man who never asked to be a politician. At first, when he was asked, he declined. That much I know. But then, pressure mounted on him from home and abroad that he should please save the country and accept to stand in the political gap which Obangida had created. So with all this pressure mounting on him, he said, okay, I will think about it. At that stage of thinking about it, I remember clearly Alaji, Dr. Shehu Idris, at that time, the enemy of Zazao, enemy of Zaria, and this creature here talking to you, were among those who put pressure on him to think of the pros and cons of not accepting the call to stand in the huge gap that has been created. He was reminded that nationwide at that time, tensions were running high, and that anything could happen in the barracks. You know what I mean? Because in those days, it was fashionable to hear fellow Nigerians, you know it. In addition, we also knew that from the very beginning of his journey to a political nationhood, this country called Nigeria, since independence, has been a bloodletting country. Bloodletting country from the very beginning. You remember the Western region of Russian Wet here? Wet with petrol and put matches and burn him. You remember the pogrom in northern Nigeria? You remember the military coups and counter coups? You recall the devastating 30 month civil war? You remember the hitherto unknown reckless armed robbery attacks? Of course, you won't forget so soon the numerous political assassinations, all of which sniffed life. Precious life you can make, precious life you can create out of millions of Nigerian people. So all this we brought back to Kichuneko to remember. And we said, should violence be allowed to break out again, we will not, we will not have an idea of who will be consumed in the process and who will remain. It was from that angle that he was persuaded and reluctantly said, well, maybe, maybe it will stand in the gap, even though very risky, but Nigeria is more important than himself. So somehow, if you could, by the grace of God, to avoid a repeat of 1963, if, by the grace of God, you could somehow navigate through the political landmines that were planted, all around him, to restore normalcy and return to democracy. Somehow, he agreed to stand in the gap. While some held him and breathed a deep sigh of relief, others didn't welcome that decision. I remember vividly 
a lack of a better line of Ali Pede, called him on phone repeatedly to come back home. They go lay. And you come up on You my bun lay. Alaki wasn't thinking of Nigeria. He was thinking of his own people. Abiola, and Ibama, Choneko, and Ibama. So God forbid, it shouldn't be him. Uncle turned to me and said, you see what I'm saying? Why me? And I said, sir, with due respect, why not you? Why me? He repeated, why not you? As I was talking to him, I'm of Zara too, was talking to him. Even our church, at least part of our church, refused to give him benefit of the doubt because they didn't understand what was going on. What a pity. Meanwhile, the political gladiators and the news media had a field day. They vilified this man. They demonized him. But to my utter consternation, the same people who called him unprintable names daytime, same people would troop to Atala Guda House at night, Nicodemusly, asking for favors and political appointment. Ah, Nigerians! Ayere! Ayere! They will call him all sorts of terrible names at that time. And at night they were there, 11 p.m., 12 p.m., 12 p.m. 1 a.m. they are there. Poor man, he won't be able to eat, he won't be able to sleep. And I said, Uncle, send them away now. Uh, you can't do that. Some of those agitators claiming that on June 12th they stood were mere political opportunists. And they made loudest noise. People of God, on June 12th, they were feeding fat. As they are doing today, the same political opportunities are feeding fat on Nigerian chaos, even today. Bad as Nigeria is today, they are saying all is well. But they even say, Nigeria has never had it so good. Really. Really. Shall I go into the details? Time won't allow. You know what we are going through in your various locations. I keep it to myself for another day. But one thing I know is this. Nigeria has never been this bad. And those are saying, it is the best time for Nigeria. Ha! Ah, what a pity. Whatever you may say about this man, from our standpoint, he put his life on the line for the sake of this country. Even when I a struck in a palace school, it was a fellow Yoruba man who put a gun to his head, asking him to sign his resignation. Hmm, this country. Perhaps you would like to know that Chief Shudekon was not completely unaware that the coup might take place because the advice had been told what to do by those who are close to him. They knew the plan was on. And they said, retire him. Retire Abacha and his clique. At the same time, announce his successors. Huh. Uncle, no, you can't do that. Oh, ah, the man next to him, I could appoint is another Yoruba man. I'm Yoruba man. They will accuse me of tribalism. They will accuse me of nepotism. So I, I can't retire him. Leave him alone. Ah, uncle, this man doesn't mean well. He spared a bacha. Only to be thrown, overthrown by him. But then, what I reason to this is this. He not being a typical ambitious Nigerian politician, he refused to do anything to preserve himself in office. A typical Nigerian politician would have done everything possible to continue in office, come rain, come fire. The rest is history. People of God, say what you like about this man. One thing is clear, he has done that with God and never to do for himself, for his family, for his church, and for this country. He has finished his race. He is now asleep in the Lord. When he wakes up at the end of time, it will be in the glorious eternal kingdom of God, and there to reign 
with all the saints forever. How about you? Are you today in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he in you? Are you in him? Let me borrow uh, government, Nigerian government language. I assure you, I want to assure you, Jesus is your only guaranteed hope of gaining access to eternal life after this increasingly terrible world has passed away. Let us therefore be careful the life we live. Let us be weary of judging others, especially when we don't have all the facts of the matter. Take heed that you don't spend your today in any way that may ruin your tomorrow. And Paul says, but I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, about those who are falling asleep in the Lord, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who are falling asleep in Jesus. Will you be among them? And now to the King Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God, be all honor and glory, majesty, now and forevermore. Please sit with the permission of the head of our national church, the cathedral choir, we render an anthem. Please sit.
The Lord be with you. Let us go on our knees as we continue in prayer. We are on page 16. Lord Jesus, by his death and victory over sin, has opened the gates of heaven for all who put their trust in him. Let us therefore pray that the soul of our brother Ernest Adegule Oladende may come to our true home in heaven and that God may in time reunite us all there. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the people of God, that all who are baptized may die to sin and rise to a new and eternal life. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that in the means of things we cannot understand, that the Lord will help us to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, and the resurrection of life everlasting. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who mourn the loss of their loved ones especially the family of our brother, Anes Adigunle, Oladende Shoneko, that they may know God's presence with them and that they be comforted in their bereavement. Fill them with your hope and peace. Lord, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who travel that God will grant them safe return, bless and guide them, and protect them from the dangers of the road. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all here present that our hope be anchored on Christ and that God may one day reunite us all in his kingdom. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our hope, we employ your mercy. Come to the aid of our beloved Anes Adegunle Oladeide, that he may be delivered from his sin. May your pardon obtain for him to live an eternal fellowship with thee, in whom he trusted, believed, and served. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Have compassion, O Lord, upon all who are mourning for those dear to them, and upon all who are lovely and desolate. Be their comforter and friend. Give them such early help and consolation as you see to be best for them, and grant them a fuller knowledge and realization of your love. For your holy name's sake. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please stand. We are the body of Christ. 
by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace as we wave to each other. God bless you.
accept, O Lord, the offerings of your children and use it for the extension of your kingdom here on earth. These gifts are a token of our commitment to you and pledges of our willingness to serve the world, the church around us. Bless both the gifts and the givers. Make provision for the needy through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for He is your living Word. Through Him, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-given spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because through him you have given us the hope of a glorious resurrection so that although Death comes to us all, yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. For to your faithful people, life is changed and not taken away. And when our mortal flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Accept our precious heavenly Father through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread, and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he has given thanks, he break it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he has given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith.
therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his suffering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. The prayer of humble says, let us say together, we do not presume to come to this year table. O oh, merciful Lord, trust in our own righteousness, that in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious love, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let light eternal shine Upon them, O Lord, with thy sense forevermore, for thou art gracious. Rest. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. The communion shall be taken by those who are confirmed and if you are coming from another uh, denomination, please indicate. If you are not taking communion, don't please jump up and come because others are leaving the pew. If you are not taking Holy Communion, please don't come. The Lord be with you.
handkerchief te geven.
For our post coming on him on page 28. The seed of faith shall be taken. Thank you. We stand to take the hymn, please.
the Lord be with you. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Please kneel as we pray. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that the soul of thy servant, Ernest, Adegunle, Oladeinde, which had passed from this world, being cleansed by the sacrifice of Christ and delivered from sin, may obtain thy pardon and everlasting rest through Jesus Christ our Lord. As our Savior taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us say the prayer of oblation together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you as we take the hymn on page 24, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We invite the immediate family members of His Excellency Chief Dr. Shoneka to come forward for special prayers. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your own saint. And we give you thanks that indeed in you we live and move and have our being. You are the God of all flesh. You are the giver of life. You are the sustainer and keeper of life. And when this life is ended, we also return to you. You are the great judge, Lord Jesus Christ. And for this purpose, you died and rose again, that you be Lord over both the living and the dead. And so whether we live, we are yours. And even in death, we are with you. We give you hearty thanks for the life of your servant, our father, mentor, colleague, friend, and brother, Ernest Oladende Sheneko. For the time that you have given and for giving him to be a companion in this earthly pilgrimage, Lord, you are born with him through life. You raised him as a leader and a shepherd. And indeed, he has lived to fulfill your purpose in his generation. And so, on this altar, as we celebrate his life, we bring thanks and praise unto you and present this family which you have given him, a mama Margaret, unto you, Lord. For we are persuaded that whatever is committed to you, Lord, you will keep until the day of your appearing. And so, Lord, we commit mama to you. In this challenging time, Lord, be all in all to her. Let your comforting presence surround her. Let your everlasting arm bear her up. Let your outstretched hand uphold her. God, our Father, she waits upon you. Day by day, renew her strength. And Lord, we ask that you be her comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the father of the fatherless and the husband of the widow. Lord, we pray that you will be to the sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, and the family of Shenico, all in all. That as they look up to you, Lord, they will draw strength. Lord, keep this family one. May they walk with you in faith and in love for you and for one another. And Lord, help them in the days and months and years ahead to please you in their lives. And above all, may they take care and stand with Mama in this challenging time. And so, Father, we pray that your favor will be upon the children and children's children, that God, they will rise up in their generations to praise you. And God, you will show them your faithfulness and mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray that the legacies and memories of your servant Ernest shall endure in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask that as they go forth from here, may your presence go with them. And Lord, Uphold and surround them with your glory. And when all is done and finished, Lord, may we 
be with you in your eternal kingdom. As we shall meet with him and all the saints and shall part no more. When all tears shall be wiped away and your people shall be encouraged. Let it be heavenly father. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we welcome you all to this great and divine service. We commiserate with the entire family of Shoneka, and in particular, Mama Margaret Shoneka children and grandchildren, it is our prayer that the Lord will stand by you and sustain you all in Jesus' name. I want to sincerely appreciate the church prelates in this service, starting with the primate of all Nigeria, our own, the Archbishop Metropolitan and Primate of our great church and can communion, the most reverend Dr. Henry Indukuba, our Mama Nigeria, Mrs. Angela Indukuba. Papa, we appreciate your coming. <clears throat> the Lord Almighty will continue to strengthen you in the name of Jesus. We are ever, ever proud of you. We appreciate you, and we are indeed very grateful. We also have the former primate of our great church, the most reverend Dr. Peter Jasper Akinola. He preached the sermon. Baba, we appreciate you. The Lord Almighty will continue to honor you. Thank you for that strong voice to our nation. The Lord will bless your words. We have the, the most reverend Dr. Ephraim Adebola Adimowo, Esquire Bishop of Lagos, Dean Emeritus of Church of Nigeria and Communion. We appreciate you, Baba. Thanks for coming. We have the right reverend Dr. Akinatere, the Bishop of Awori, the right reverend Dr. Batun Dadeyemi, Bishop of Badagri, the right reverend Abiodun Tai Walaoi, Bishop of Oshunoth, the Right Reverend Professor Dapa Shaju, Bishop of Theology and Church of Nigeria. The Right Reverend Manuel Adekunle, Bishop of Egbada Osis. 
the Right Reverend Dr. James Ulushola Dediji, Bishop of Lagos West, the Right Reverend Moses Tabwaye, Bishop of Guadalada, the Right Reverend Olaji Adebayo, Bishop of Ibimor West, the Right Reverend Michael Oluambi, Bishop of Yewa, the Right Reverend Festus Davis, Bishop of Ugori Magungo, the Right Reverend Dr. William Haledi Kube, Bishop of Oyo, the Right Reverend Atanel Gudikpe, Bishop of Ifo, the Right Reverend George Bako, Retrial Bishop of Lokoja, Right Reverend Akinpe Lu Johnson, the Bishop of Mainland, the Right Reverend Bidis Akwede Okuyelu, Bishop of Oshun North East, the Right Reverend Stephen Adibite, that's not Bishop of Ikeja Methodist Church of Nigeria, the Right Reverend Dr. Peter Ludikpe, Bishop of Ijebu, the Right Reverend Matthew Owada, your retired Bishop of Egba. We welcome you all and others. We are indeed very, very grateful. The Lord will bless your Episcopal ministry in Jesus' name. Let me warmly, warmly welcome our own, His Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Shibadu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, GCOA. We appreciate your coming. The Lord will honor you. Very soon, shortly, we will invite you to come and address this great assembly. We also have General Yakub Gawan, uh, the former head of state. Mama Victoria Gawan. We appreciate you, Baba. And Mama, we appreciate your coming. In this service, we also have His Excellency, Dr. Goodluck, Ebele Jonathan, GCFR, GCOL. Former President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, you are welcome. Thank you for coming and associating with us at this beautiful time of celebrating the life of this worthy servant of God, our great Father. You are warmly, warmly welcome. We have Boss Mustafa, Secretary to the Government of the Federation. We are, you are welcome, sir. You are welcome. We have His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sanwolu, our own beloved governor of Lagos State. Your Excellency, you are welcome. God bless you. His Excellency, Prince Dr. Dako Abiodun, governor of Ogun State. You are welcome. His Excellency, Godwin Obaseke, the governor of Edo State. You are welcome. We also welcome Senator Ebikunle Amosu, former governor of Ogun State, it's distinguished senator, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Yeye Ulufunshaw Amosu. You are welcome. We appreciate you. We also welcome Senator Rabiu Kwansukro, former governor of Kano State, distinguished senator, Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are warmly, warmly welcome. Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, is also a Lai Muhammad. We appreciate you. Architect Olamile Khan Adigwite, Honorable Minister of Mines and Steel Development, you are also welcome. Otuba Adeniyi Adebayo, Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, you are warmly welcome. Senator Olorimbe Mamora, Honorable Minister of State for Health, you are indeed warmly welcome. Mr. Jaji Sambo, Honorable Minister of State for Works and Housing, you are welcome. We have Dr. Charles Akinola, Chief of Staff to Osun State Governor, also a member of the family. You are welcome. We appreciate you. The Lord will honor you. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your coming, and we wish you journey messages back to your destination. Indeed, you are blessed and remain rapturable. Let me quickly invite the provost. Thank you. Now, we would like to invite the Vice President of our great nation to please step forward to address us. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, former presidents, General Yakubu Gowan, and Her Excellency, former First Lady, Mrs. Victoria Gowan, Your Excellency, Dr. Ebele Jonathan, former president, Your Excellencies, my Lord's spiritual, my Lord's temporal, the family of Chief Anna Shoneko, Mrs. Margaret Shoneko, and the children, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. A tribute to Chief Ernest Adegunle Oladeinde Shoneko. If ever a man could have said to have lived a life of two equally consequential halves, and in service. That man would be Chief Ernest Adegunle Oladende Shonekon, GCFR. And so it transpired that within the first four and a half decades of his life, Chief Shonekon had established himself as one of the nation's foremost corporate technocrats and a figure of renown in the boardrooms of many private companies, multinational and indigenous, in which he served as chairman and director. It was in this position that he became known as the face of Nigerian free enterprise, as the UACN, under his leadership, fully evolved from being a trading outfit to a manufacturing colossus, with interests in diverse sectors ranging from agriculture and the automotive industries to cosmetics, to electronics, textiles, amongst many other areas. He was known in the business community for his personal integrity and his reliability, and trusted in the corridors of political power for his counsel and guidance by successive governments. And as Shonekon had a position in Nigeria that few had before him or even have now. But no one could have written the script of the dramatic series of occurrences that thrust upon him the role of the head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria in one of the most turbulent chapters of our nation's history. And it became his lot to steer the ship of state in those extremely stormy waters. He was, in his own words, compelled by a sense of duty and responsibility to accept the role and give his best in shepherding his country through an experience unknown and unprecedented in our history. He once said in an interview shortly after he was named chairman of the Transition Council and head of government, if your country needs you, leave everything and go and help. End of quote. He saw the government that he had been chosen to lead, as he himself described it, as, quote, a child of circumstance, and his mission as that of ending a cycle of instability, as he said, was, and I quote, leading progressively to a catastrophe. Chief Shonekon lived his life always conscious and motivated by a burden of duty. As a citizen of considerable privilege to give back, either in his many philanthropic and civic pursuits or in public service, it is a testament to that sense of duty that even while out of office, Chief Shonekon remained deeply vested in the fate of his country. In 1994, he founded the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, a continuation of his lifelong advocacy of free enterprise, as well as a demonstration of his belief that national development is attainable only if the private sector and the public sector collaborate deeply. 
it summed up the professional duality of his own life as a businessman and as a statesman. In December 1996, he was appointed chairman of the Vision 2010 Committee, a group of distinguished Nigerians from all sectors of national life, charged with developing a blueprint for the country's transformation by its 50th year of independent nationhood. It was an assignment to which he applied his customary dedication and diligence. In the latter chapter of his life, Chief Shonekon seamlessly assumed the mantle of an elder statesman. He was supportive of all governments and served his nation in this role far above the trenches of partisanship. He was consistently calm and dignified, a calm and dignified presence in the sanctums of the National Council of State and a steady voice of measured counsel to all who sought him out. But he was also a man of great wit and humor. I remember when I invited him and some other heads of states and vice presidents to do a recording of the hymn, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, for the archives in the different Nigerian languages. When I spoke to him about it, he laughed. And when I asked him why he was laughing, he said, when you hear me singing, you too will laugh. Afterwards, he said, and uh, our dear mother, Mrs. Margaret Shoneko, was possibly one of the few witnesses to the rehearsals for the singing of that hymn. But afterwards, after we had all sang, he said, after hearing the others, he didn't think he did badly either. So we both laughed, and I said to him that in due course, if he groomed his very well-known baritone, he might actually make the world stage. We had in that great choir, General Yakubu Gon, who is here today, Baba Olusheg Basonjo, who also sang, uh, his, who sang his bit, Commando Ebitu Ukiwe, and the late Dr. Alex Ekweme, and General Oladi Kodier. In, in, in time, he would make so many other notable philanthropic and civic contributions to society. But today we stand in the light of this great man, the inevitable transition of the people that we love, sad as it is, gives us a somber opportunity to celebrate the lives that they led. And in the light of that, to reflect on our ongoing human experience that Chief Enoshonekon lived an extraordinary life is self-evident. His accomplishments as a businessman, a political figure, and a bridge builder is already the stuff of legend and will be talked about for generations. But perhaps what deserves greater attention is the way he carried himself through life and the high values he exemplified. That genuine respect that he had for all people of all classes, of all religions, of all tribes and gender. His unflinching belief in the inherent goodness of everyone, his love and generosity, not just to his family, but to all, his knowledge and experience-driven leadership and counsel that he provided always with unfailing humility and courteousness. These were the unique virtues that underpinned his extraordinary achievements. Your Excellencies, and Shonekon lives a life, a life lesson for the nation that he leaves behind. What might that be? We would be right to think of Chief Ernest Shonekon as a man of destiny, a man chosen for his time, just as we would also be right to think of Nigeria as a nation of destiny, uniquely positioned to be a rallying point and an inspiration for the entire black race. He proved by his life that destiny for one or for a nation is a manifest result of small choices made every day by ordinary people doing the best they can and persevering in goodness. May his example endure in our individual and collective memories as we continue our journeys through life and nationhood. On behalf of the President President Muhammad Buhari, 
the government and people of Nigeria, I extend sincere condolences to his immediate family, Mama, Mrs. Margaret Choneko, and their children, Adeboye, Korede, Kemi, and Yele. Thank you for giving him room to serve this nation and to serve humanity at large. And we pray that the Lord will comfort you all in Jesus' name and bless the memory of your father and the father of our nation, Chief Ernest Adegule Shuneko, GCFR, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic. God bless you and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Your Excellency. The Lord be with you. Uh, I must also recognize the presence with us, um, His Excellency Otumbag Binga Daniel, former Governor of Ogun State. You are highly welcome. I also want to recognize the presence of our leader, and the captain of our team in Lagos Diocese and Lagos Province. I want to welcome him to his cathedral, the Most Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishabi Olumakaye. Thank you, sir. I also recognize the presence of Mama Lagos Professor Mrs. Motunrayo Olumakaye. You are welcome. Thank you for joining. I pray that God Almighty will continue to fill you with unction to function as you lead us in this diocese and in this province. Uh, with the permission of His grace, we are going to take few song tributes. Few song tributes. And I want to invite members of the Cathedral Torch Bearers to give their song tribute. Just one stanza of your song tribute. Cathedral Torch Bearers, let us do that briskly, please.
Thank you. Cathedral Sako. Thank you. As directed, and because of time, we now rise to take the non dimities.
The Lord be with you. The commendation on page 34. Ernest, Adegunle, Alada Inde, our brother in Christ, go forth upon your journey from this world in the name of God the Father who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ who suffered for you, in the name of of the Holy Spirit who strengthened you. May your rest be in peace and your dwelling in the paradise of the people of God. Amen. They withdraw him.
Beaming from the nation's capital, we bring to you the good news through various programming, news updates, worship, and teachings. The paralysis of sin makes us to be separated from God. Contact us for your live streaming solutions and event coverage, such as synods, conferences, seminars, revivals, and lots more. Engage us in showcasing your brands and services to the world through Hadver.